Spider-Man Far From Home is the final movie of phase three, the best phase Marvel has ever done. And let's be honest, people, it's not even close. This has been the golden age of Marvel. I have no doubt about that. Spider-Man may not have been the best movie in the phase, but it's still a, a great film, an amazing Spider-Man film. But I want to take a second to talk about phase three because it's over now. We're saying goodbye to phase three. And I just want to give my appreciation to Marvel for this, this whole time period. Phase three kicked off with Captain America Civil War. That's May 6th, 2016. And it ends off with the movie we're going to talk about today, Spider-Man Far From Home on July 2nd, 2019. So that's a three-year span where they put out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven movies. That's eleven movies in three years. If they did that now, we'd complain that they're putting out too much stuff. But I don't know how they did it. These were just absolute bangers. I would say the weakest one is probably Captain Marvel, but even Captain Marvel wasn't that bad. But outside of Captain Marvel, every one of those films could have made a case for the top 10 on my list. That's insane. I can't believe how how many projects they put out in a short amount of time. Because three years is a short amount of time. We're not getting anything right now. They're only giving us two Avengers, movie in, Avengers movies in this entire phase. That sucks. I want an Avengers movie, or sorry, not entire phase, entire era. So the, the multiverse saga is going to have two Avengers movies, but the Infinity Saga had one, two, three, four Avengers movies. Double the Avengers movies and probably the same amount of time. No, because we're talking 11 years. Still, I bet you it's the same amount of time. That's crazy. I can't believe how, how good this phase was. I'm really going to miss it because it's, let's be honest, it kind of goes downhill from here. The next phase, phase four, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight movies. You know, this whole time, I've been complaining that Marvel's been putting out too much stuff. And that's why it's the products have suffered. But I just realized in this moment how good the content was. And it was more quantity in a shorter amount of time. That's wild. I think maybe, I don't know, maybe COVID derailed a lot of it. Maybe the, they they had such a, with the Infinity Sack, it was such a big buildup and, and such a big accomplishment. There was maybe like a tough time finding a way to move forward after. They should have given themselves another break because we only had we had a two year break between Far From Home and Black Widow, but it probably would have been a one year break if it wasn't for COVID. So what I would have done is I would have had a solid five year break. Five years have an exact plan. No, all the movies you're gonna do. You know, Far From Home is it? I always get the mix up. It's Far From Home, not No Way Home. No Way Home's the last one. All the homes get me tripped up. But Far From Home was a great way to put a cherry on top of this epic phase, although I think this should have just ended with Endgame. Like, come on, why is Far From Home the last movie of the phase? Why not start phase four with Far From Home? If anything, what they should have done is Far From Home should have kicked off this next era because it's Spider-Man trying to move on from Tony Stark and, and missing him and grieving and feeling that loss. That would have been an excellent way to kick off the next era of Marvel. They should have just done that. If I had to say one issue with Far From Home and really kind of this whole saga or this whole trilogy of Spider-Man films, it would be, I wish Spider-Man had more stories ground level, you know, in New York. It's, you had the first movie, then the next two, he's not even there. It's He's all over the place. Like, I guess you could argue that the last movie was, a, it took place in New York, but it wasn't really grounded like, Spider-Man's a grounded character. I, I want to see him street level. And I know that's what we're going to get in the second trilogy. But I think it should have been the other way around. Start him street level. And then as he grows and his popularity grows in the universe and he accomplishes more things, then he has these more grandeur level threats to deal with. Then he gets involved in the multiverse and space and all that stuff. That, to me, is a more natural progression than what we've seen Spider-Man do. And in saying that, I still love the film. I... I Thought the humor was great. Mysterio, we all knew he was going to be a bad guy going into the movie. But I still thought it was great watching how it happened. The trippiness of Mysterio was always a favorite of mine. Like when I play the Spider-Man game, 
the second one, Miles Morales and Spider-Man and Miles, that one, I love that game. And I love the side missions with Mysterio. So I, yeah, naturally I love the movie, right? Uh, it was the way they portrayed that was really good with the, the tri- like I said, the trippiness and you don't know what's real and the drones making everyone believe that these elementals were real. It's natural to default to kind of a Spider-Man silliness in a lot of these Spider-Man movies because it's kind of a hallmark trait of the character, that goofiness. And I get it, but I found in this movie, they kind of balanced it out really well with the grief that Spider-Man was feeling over Tony Stark. Everywhere I look, I see his face. That's what he says. In the trailer, they cut it in a way that he saw like, spider uh iron man's uh mural it's this constant theme of feeling like he he can't do it he's not good enough he and also trying to balance the fact that he wants to have a normal life with mj and you know hang out with ned just do typical kid stuff but i think he realizes in this film that he really can't it's he has a responsibility tony stark gave him that responsibility with edith Edith, edith are these glasses that He gets in the movie that are basically this crazy defense system. And uh, the whole point of Mysterio is he was tricking Spider-Man into giving it to him so that he can use it to kind of make himself look like this big hero to the world. It was really well done. Great story. I didn't like how Nick Fury was a scrawl. Like, did that really have to happen in this movie? Do we need that reveal? Didn't really serve any purpose. And it was an after credit scene. If it just ended there, then no one would have known. Watching back, he didn't really act like Nick Fury, but you could have made him act like Nick Fury and wrote it differently, you know what I mean? I really um, loved Happy in this film. That one scene where he, Peter Parker looks to Happy, he's in tears, scared he's going to get all his friends killed, and he just says, I really miss him. Then Happy says, I miss him too, man. And then um, Peter Parker goes and he starts to build a suit again because Mysterio destroyed it. And what he does is he puts his hand through this hologram and he kind of starts like messing with the hologram and it's, it, it mirrors when Tony Stark was doing that with Iron Man. Happy looks at him like, like a tears in his eyes. <laughs> he sees Tony Stark and Peter Parker there and it's just this beautiful moment. I thought that was my favorite part about the film. Just Peter Parker dealing with that loss and, and mourning his, his hero and his, his really... Tony Stark was his only father-like figure he had. If he's mourning Tony Stark after this movie, I'm mourning the loss of Phase 3. Because now we got to move on to Phase 4, which still has some great movies in it. Maybe in this rewatch, when I look at them again, they'll come, they'll hit me a little better. Who knows? That's the whole point, right? Let's find out on another episode of Savvy Geeks. I'm your host, Mark Savvy, and I'll see you next time.